I have my guest, Nacha. She's originally from Virginia, and she's been here in New York City for about 12, 15 years. And we're going to open up with her performing, and then after that, she's going to come over and we're going to sit down and chat, and then later see her new video. So please welcome my guest, Nacha, how do you do? Hi, Thank you to everyone for coming in today. Thank you for happy, having us. Happy first day of summer. <laughs> no. Yeah. I totally forgot. <laughs> Great. Thanks so tell us about the song that you're going to be singing here. Um, the first song that we're going to sing is called Is This All There Is? And it's actually from my second album, White Noise. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be performing it for the first time here today. We Great. didn't tour that album. Um, and then the last song that we're going to sing is the actual video that you're premiering uh -huh. for my upcoming album, The Holy Hell of Hope. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Okay, great. Great. Did I mean to grow up like this? Did I mean to have the life I'm living? And did someone forget to tell me that smiling can hurt Did I mean to care about you? And did you mean to really leave me? Did someone forget to tell me that there are too many goodbyes? Here 
Great. So I'm still here. Princess. 
Thank you for coming in. What a wonderful performance. Thank you. Yes. And who are your band members that you're performing with? Um, that is my bass player, uh -huh. Hayato. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, on, uh, well, he's playing guitar today. Yes. He's just an all around musician. Yeah. And on the second guitar is Monk Washington. Wonderful. Welcome, yeah. guys. Thank you for your performance. And everybody in the audience, it's really great. I know. Welcome to the show. I'm fine with it's good in here. Yes, okay. I know. It's a little tight. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, well, I loved listening to that song. Thank you know, I'm you. still here. Because I know it from the video. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. very powerful. And we're going to be showing it later okay. on in the okay. you know, show. But it's nice to have you here to find out who <laughs> is nature. I'm happy happy to be here. Yeah, great. So you uh, grew up in Virginia, you said? I did. Mm -hmm. Small town. Uh -huh. Very close to North Carolina. Uh -huh. Many people always confuse that and think I'm talking Northern Virginia right outside of D.C. Okay. But you can hear my accent. I can. I heard so it on the Southwest phone and I was like, well, where is she from? <laughs> you know, but I could tell it was South, but I didn't know yeah. exactly where. Yeah, absolutely. What's inspiring about your music? What inspires you to write your music? Um, I guess so many things, but I, I feel like I've been doing music and writing since I was very young. Mm -hmm. I'm an only child, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think the biggest inspiration is a pursuit for some kind of perspective, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, one way that I would entertain myself, my mom had oh, a okay. piano that would play itself, but yeah. I would sit and often just um, work through feelings mm -hmm. and emotions and, and yeah. later that uh, songwriting uh -huh. came so great because you have many talents. I mean, you're a musician, <laughs> artist, <laughs> speaker, counselor, yeah, cr yeah. Uh, crossfader. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, change agent. That's really interesting. Can you explain what a crossfader is? Um, crossfader is a term I borrowed from oh. hip hop. Oh, okay. um, and people familiar with DJ culture will understand that when mm -hmm. the DJ is using turntables okay. and he's blending oh. records, mm -hmm. he crossfades. Mm -hmm. And for me, someone having identified as different or other for much of my life, um, I've tended to think of crossfader as a term that I could bring into my personal growth, that of my clients, mm -hmm. to, to really give us permission to combine and blend things that would otherwise seem like contradictions, mm -hmm. but to be able to bring them together. Wonderful. So I use that all the time. I'm a crossfader outside of the lines. Mm -hmm. I tend to mix whatever moves me. So you're a transformational counselor? counselor? Yeah. And what brings someone to um, <coughs> a session with you? I mean, how do you know somebody needs that kind of help? Uh, well, normally. We <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Who doesn't need transformation? Yeah. Yeah. Um, many people will come to me through referral. Maybe okay. um, that's been the case mostly. Um, most people are at a crossroads mm -hmm. and they are um, hoping to have some kind of paradigm shift mm -hmm. and they want to be able to take that change and to put it in the best light. Mm -hmm. And so transformational counseling is an opportunity to help you say, Ginger, where are we now mm -hmm. and how can we make the best of this moment to create what you want in the future mm -hmm. versus spending a lot of time on the past, which mm -hmm. is what more traditional therapy, mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. God for it, um, tends to utilize. But transformational counseling is very present centric. Well, you know, I'm a CPA during the day oh. and I was on a very straight road. I want to get there and I went through all the years of college and work experience, started a business and um, 30 years later, I got wow. at a serious crossroad, and I was like, wow, I'm like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Which way do I go? <laughs> exactly. Because there, I can't keep going straight. Exactly. And um, it's really interesting. So I used a lot of my experiences and interests and talents and went to producer school, and now I'm here. And See, I love it. So yeah. you would be a typical client. Mm -hmm. there, someone would come to me who's trying to get off of a 9 to 5 path or... Right. Uh -huh. own something that they've always wanted to do. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah good for you. And yeah, how long have you been doing that? For 15 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah very good. Well, yeah. you look like you're like 25 or something. <laughs> so Thank you. Wonderful. And you have a name, uh, the, the, the nickname Warrior Princess. How did that come about? You know, I think when, when I released my first album, which mm -hmm. was called The Dirty Side Up, um, I, it should not have been unusual, but for some reason, the press made it unusual to be oh, okay. a black or African American woman doing music that was, um, you know, very much based in rock riffs. And I think people tend to associate um, 
you know, empowerment or badass. That's what Time Out New York dubbed uh -huh. me, American, new American badass. But I think it was really just perhaps The Rock, maybe something about our stage performance, mm -hmm. because I very much bring my same desire to wanting to see people mm -hmm. evolve to the stage. I mean, I think they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley could mm -hmm. be a transformational counselor. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's very no-nonsense, you know, um, I expecting people to stand in their power. And so somehow that nickname, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the labels, I can't remember. It was somehow the press dubbed that. Mm -hmm. Well, when I and saw it, stuck. I, I immediately put it on the headline of the press release <laughs> and popped, you, you know, it made breaking news on the PR site and wow. hundreds of hits, you know, just in wow. a few hours. Yeah, wow. what a wonderful term. That's so. amazing. I like yeah. it. You like being an empowered woman, right? Yeah. I take it. I own it fully. <laughs> so you have a new album that's I do. out. I do. Yes. And um, it's called? The Holy Hell of Hope. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty yeah. serious. That kind of shows that you've been in a dark place and you're trying <laughs> to get out. And, you know, reading your background, I mean, you've really done some serious, you know, gone through some serious experiences. Yeah. You lost a loved one through a Homicide, murder. Homicide, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was hard. You know, I think that this album is not any different in terms of its use to help me mm -hmm. transform okay. a difficult situation. Yeah. Because that's what I use music for. You know, I, I laugh a lot and pick with people about Prince from Purple Rain. Uh -huh. and it's like, I do the music for me. But ultimately it is for my own catharsis. Uh -huh. and, and I'm happy and hopeful to share and hope that it inspires other people. But generally, uh -huh. if you turn to my records, you're gonna find that I'm actually seeking to you know, work out some stuff that was difficult for me. White Noise, the previous album was about Ed's murder and that was really difficult. The record helped a lot. This record, The Holy Hell of Hope, mm -hmm. is dealing with really exploring the two different sides of hope. Because mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of suicide work uh, with families as well. And wow. Look, I believe that hope is absolutely mm -hmm. necessary. We have to have it. Um, I think it keeps us anchored to the planet. So I'm a big advocate of it. But um, having been someone to personally deal with an addict partner, mm -hmm. um, I came to know the really dark side of hope. And mm -hmm. you know that fine line where hope can be denial, mm -hmm. or you're just hoping and hoping for something to change. Mm -hmm. um, and you ultimately realize that you're more committed to hope then you are a change. Mm, interesting. And, and so that was a difficult mm -hmm. um, process, but the album has helped me to really um, own the magic again of hoping mm -hmm. rather than punishing myself yeah. for, for being hopeful. We have to be. Yeah, and what I'm hearing a lot okay. from people <coughs> is that, you know, they've tried to commit suicide sometime during yeah. their life. I saw somebody recently with slit wrists and stitches yeah. and I didn't know if it was a tattoo but it was a suicide attempt. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so sad because the person's only in his 20s and he's handsome. It right. seems like he has everything going for him. Right. But right. there's also, right. you know, a dark side or, right. you know, what what's wrong with people that, right. Right. you know, where are they that they, they're so hopeless. Right. Because, right. Um, you know. Absolutely. They well, have to have hope. Yeah. And that's part of my goal and intention for the album is to really spark hopefully this epic conversation mm -hmm. about why it is so important to be able to find hope, mm -hmm. you knew, after even catastrophic disappointment, and, and the, the video that you're gonna show later, yeah. I'm still here, is really about being able to own that for ourselves. Because I think in the course of a lifetime, most people, you know, you have a cliff moment mm -hmm. where, you know, you might contemplate, you know, this mm -hmm. is, this, this feels like the end, or what's the point, or like the first song, okay. is this all there is? Mm -hmm. But um. You know, I'm a big advocate and fan of coming through your difficulties and being able to define them in, in mm -hmm. meaningful ways. Who are your major influences for your music? Um, well, uh, my auntie, one, my mm -hmm. mom's youngest sister, um, was very much into Parliament Funkadelic oh, and Earth, yeah. Wind and Fire, and that sort of got uh, rock and roll in my house mm -hmm. and Janis Joplin and, yeah. and Hendrix. Um, so I would say Zeppelin, Hendrix, um, Joplin, um, Nina Simone, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, people from that era. And then more contemporary would be people like PJ Harvey, but I'm also a massive hip-hop fan, mm -hmm. so I love Wu-Tang Clan and RZA's production. 
very much psychedelic rock and hip hop mm -hmm. seem to be the genres that influence a lot of my choices. And um, ha have your band members influenced your music? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, Hayato, uh, who's from Japan, um, and, and I think, as if I remembered him telling me, listen to soul music growing uh -huh. up, and Bootsy <laughs> Collins, an amazing bass oh, player. Yeah. But yeah, they have a, 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 a major impact. And Swiss Chris, who was my very first MD, uh -huh. you know, when I'm fresh and, and a country girl <laughs> here, and he put my whole band together from yeah. Berkeley. Um, and, and Chris is very unique as a musician in his own right, as well as Hayato. And, and my old keyboard player, who's now out on the road with Beyonce, each of them brought a very specific kind of aesthetic mm -hmm. um, to my project, mm -hmm. and you know we've been able to just integrate that and mm -hmm. find where it meshes. I love those guys. Yeah, and uh, I know Swiss from being the MD for John Legend. From John Legend, and exactly. And I was like, who is that drummer? <laughs> Don't <laughs> we love him? Yeah, I'm really yeah. glad to find him. And, you know, he left John, and I saw him performing on Joe's Pub. Yeah, that's when yeah. I went down. Yeah. And he's been very instrumental in, you know, booking a lot of guests for my show, and yeah. that's how you're here, and it's just wonderful to meet all these eclectic people yeah, and you great. know backgrounds and styles and yeah. all that kind of stuff. How's New York uh, changed your or influenced your style of music? I think New York really probably just helped me pronounce mm -hmm. an aggressiveness that's already a natural mm -hmm. part of my personality. I'm a fire sign and mm -hmm. um, high energy, mm -hmm. as is my mom and, and the women in my family. Mm -hmm. So moving here, I think sort of that can do. Mm -hmm. Um, badass attitude was very much influenced by the the pace of New mm -hmm. York and mm -hmm. great. Well, we're on. down to just the last few minutes of the show. Can oh. you imagine just the last few minutes of the show? See, we said we chatted up. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, we have a few more minutes. I want to have the control room roll in a, f a recent photo uh, of oh, nature. Yeah. yeah, look at that. I just <laughs> think that is an amazing photo. Wow. I tell you. I want that cat Chris? suit. Yeah, <laughs> you want it? <laughs> yes. It took forever to find that. One. Oh, it's great. <laughs> so you have Swiss Chris on drums. Yeah, and your bass player, yes, right? Yes, Wonderful. yes, yes, yes. And, and there are many others in uh, the band, but that uh -huh. happens to be the one from Very the good. shot. Yeah. So um, let's see your new video.